Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing a case on class 2 composite restoration. I am Dr. Abdul Wahid and I will be sharing a case with you. So let's begin. Here we have a class 2 case. Uh, as you can see there is distal caries on the terminal molar. Now what are the challenges here? As you can see the tongue is quite large and elevated. There is less vestibule space on the buccal side and we can see some gingiva encroaching the carious part. Yeah. As you can see we have this gingival overgrowth which is encroaching into the space which was cavitated because of carious process. And as I said earlier that tongue is elevated kind of or uh, you know some patients have large tongue similarly on the buccal side we have less space so all in all this is a challenging case and uh, we'll be discussing how i'll manage this case coming to the radiograph this is the iopa of the same case we can see the pulp or the pulp chamber is still safe and the carious activity has not yet reached the pulp chamber. So that's a good thing for us. Another thing we need to look for is the height of the alveolar crest bone because it will be helping us to judge or to ascertain how deep is our carious lesion, how deep is our class 2 case. So I think this is a manageable case difficult but yes manageable so I'll show you how I manage this case so first first of all uh, uh, we went ahead with isolation and uh, without isolation this case might have been not possible or I would say it the results won't be as good as uh, with isolation so as you can see after isolation we managed to get a very clean field which is very much accessible and very much easy to work. I'll show you another picture from another angle which will make you realize how how easily we converted this difficult case into a little bit more manageable. Here, yeah. as you can see here, here is a carious process, cavitated. You might be wondering where is the gingival overgrowth? Well. I just I, I didn't cut that gingiva part because I was I was afraid of excessive bleeding. Not that I cannot control that bleeding with the rubber dam isolation, but why intentionally create a situation where I'll have to put in extra efforts to manage. So instead I selected a thick, heavy rubber dam sheet and I tucked that gingival overgrowth underneath the rubber dam. And then I started the phase excavation process always and always most of the time i always prefer to excavate from the periphery than make my way towards in why because our restoration the, our restoration the periphery is the part which will be facing much more uh, insults from the oral environment the ginger uh, the saliva and everything so we want our bonding composite bonding to be impeccable on the periphery not that we don't want a good bonding in the inside the dentin but see bonding occurs much more stronger on the enamel part right and uh, if this is secured we can assume that our restoration will last much more longer so start your series excavation from the periphery circumferentially very much aggressive as you can see we, we don't have any curious process and then we make, make our way towards the center part and uh, you can see that I have completed everything along the periphery and when it comes to dentine I have left I have uh, I, I have left some amount of discolored dentine which was hard but not carious as we usually do the next step was obviously as it is a class 2 restoration I need to use a matrix so I went ahead with uh, regular topelmere matrix and as you can see, I have adapted my doppelmer here. I have adapted my doppelmer properly. Now this can be tricky. 
like adaptation of the firmware can be really tricky there are a lot of questions uh, in when we are using a TOEFL mirror, usually in dental schools, we are being taught that uh, whether where, where should we keep our TOEFL mirror on the buccal side, whether it should be on the buccal side or or on the lingual side, right? Usually in dental school, we never think much about the rubber dam and then we think, okay, fine, we can't keep it on lingual side because there is tongue, right? But when you are using a rub, uh, rubber dam and when using a TOEFL mirror along with rubber dam, there is no issue of this lingual or the buccal side right what, what what criteria or what are the things that i keep in mind while while selecting a topple mare and whether to choose whether i shall I keep it on the buccal side or the lingual side the only thing that i keep in mind is tight adaptation of my matrix my matrix adaptation should be rock solid right that is the thing so no matter whether you use on this side or that side as long as it is tight and snug it's good uh, in the next following picture you will be able to appreciate it much much better here after the mat matrix was adapted i started acid edge process again i used my acid edge along the periphery for let's say 15 to 20 seconds and then i etch my dentine for 5 to 7 seconds right enamel is to be etched more than dentin we don't want equal because dentin is much much more sensitive dentin has less amount of minerals we don't want to etch dentin more so along the periphery around 15 to 20 seconds and for the dentin it's like 5 to 7 seconds are more than enough once the acid etch was done i did rinsing and now i think you can appreciate in this one i think you can clearly appreciate that my matrix adaptation along the proximal wall is tight and rock solid there is no loose things so that is what we want and you can see now tooth is very much clean after the acid edge you can see the dry frosty appearance of the enamel now this tooth is ready for bonding one thing i like to point to point out here which i uh, which i was not able to document in the following pictures that application of the bonding agent many times we are in so much hurry many times our isolation is not good and because isolation is not good we are so much uh, we are so much worried about loss of isolation and not contamination with saliva and everything that we hurry up while uh, while applying the bonding agent you should not hurry during the application of the bonding agent take your time apply your bonding agent to massage onto the uh, tooth surface properly right take your time apply one coat take your time massage let all that bonding agent primer penetrate all the porosities that you have created during the acid edge once that is done air thin it and once air thin is done apply another coat many times when we apply one single coat there are some voids left so once air thinning is done after the first coat go ahead and apply a second coat of bonding agent to ensure a proper strong bonding once the bonding was done i sequentially built my restoration i started with the proximal box which is called centripetal technique you know i start from the periphery here and move my way, way towards in this is called centripetal technique of class to restoration so first we create the marginal ridge along the matrix and then step by step incrementally we build up the whole tooth and the restoration you can see that some amount is stared because i was finishing the excess flushed out composite material with my uh, finishing disc with a slow speed hand key so that was that this particular rubber dam got teared and now here you can clearly see that our restoration is done and as i said i did not cut that gingiva right and to ju just to ensure that there is no excess of bleeding or there is more more convenient to the patient no bleeding so i just i had just stuck that part underneath the rubber dam and now we can see the restoration is done and here is the post operative iopa I am very much satisfied with my uh, uh, results because you can see our restoration is following the counter of the tooth there is no overhang right and the restoration appears well merged with the tooth structure.
and i hope this tooth will last so thanking you with this case and we'll be uploading much more cases in coming times see you again